So why are journal clubs so important? I've made other videos about how to run a journal club. I'll link to these videos in the description. Um, but why is it so important to have these journal clubs in the first place? And maybe if you're in a lab where there isn't a journal club yet, you should probably start one. And I'll divide this into what the journal club does for me and I think what the journal club does for the lab, even though in the end you would have to ask the people in the lab. So first of all, what does the journal club for me? I think the journal club is one of the best things that we do in this lab and it is uh, just great that we have such an active sort of uh, community around that journal club with also our own papers having arisen from journal club meetings quite frequently and usually several times a year. So for me, without the journal club, the motivation to really read a paper that's a bit outside of the area that I'm currently working on, the motivation to do that would be just so low, it would just, it would just not happen, to be honest. But when I know, well, on Monday morning at 10, we're gonna talk about this paper, I don't want to be the guy that doesn't know about this paper, so I will I will read it. Um, I will read it every week, and I think that that has helped me a lot. I've profited a lot from reading these papers uh, slightly outside of the area that I also understand very well sometimes. So I think this has been a hugely, hugely beneficial thing for myself. Now, I mean, in, in virtually none of these papers is it the case that I understand every bit of this paper. Right? It just doesn't happen because well, science is so specialized and um, there's always something about the statistics or molecular methods or something uh, that I don't quite understand. And so then I always ask, of course, in lab meeting, well, I didn't understand that and can you help me understand it? And you know, it always works. There's always somebody that has a, a better understanding of that particular uh, part of the paper than myself. And so in doing so, I of course learn, and that's hugely beneficial, of course. Since I know these papers, then I of course have a much lower threshold to include them in my own writing. So I'm much more likely to cite them because I know what they did and what their weaknesses and what their strengths are. And they're, of course, a source of inspiration also for our own work. In fact, one part of the, uh, usually the end of the lab meeting or the journal club meeting is devoted to, so what, we, what can we do with this information and how can we take this further or how has that inspired us uh, to do some certain work. And then another thing that has happened more recently is that since I always tweet the papers that we read in um, lab meeting every week in journal club, this has often led to the authors of the paper sort of uh, connecting with us like oh did you like the paper what did you think and then you know this can lead to actually some collaborations down the road so it's also a benefit of uh, having these journal clubs and you know importantly it's an influx of new ideas um, um, i usually i pick the papers and i make a point of also picking papers that are outside of the areas that we all currently work on, even this is already fairly broad in our group, but I think it's very important to read papers that are sometimes very much outside or that deal with like general issues in science and give um, rise to a lot of discussion, like around publishing or around outreach or science communication or whatever the case may be. Um, I think they're just also great for the general discussion culture in the lab. So I enjoy this a lot. And um, well, what does it do to lab members? And this is, you know, mostly from what I've heard from people that have attended the meetings and is sort of more hearsay for sure, but I can also see some of the effects. So for example, even people that don't actively contribute to these meetings in terms of, you know, maybe they're a bit too shy or since this is a fairly large group, it is hard to speak up. Um, even though more recently we try to break it down by like uh, uh, forming smaller groups where the threshold to speak up is sort of a somewhat lower. But, you know, when I remember when I was a PhD student, I, I also never said anything. I was just too shy. And I always thought if I had a question, I was the only one that didn't understand something everybody else did, which of course is not the case, right? We know this, but still this is in your mind. And so I know how this works. But even those people that, you know, never speak up in meetings or hardly ever speak up in meetings are not, you know, super active participants. I still see them when they write manuscripts or um, when they write proposals or whatever the case may be, they do use the information from the papers that we discussed. It's very obvious. So there's this, um, this flow of information. It, it gets 
to uh, lab members as well. So they definitely profit in this, in this way. Also, of course, this is a practice of scientific debate. It wants to be, needs to be practiced. I mean, it um, doesn't come naturally to some people. So not to me, it's a, like a skill that needs to be honed over time. You know, how do you um, disagree with somebody <laughs> um, without, you know, becoming personal or without you know, getting angry or, you know, but it's also how do you, you know, still infuse a bit of passion in it. So this is a sort of a fun debate. And uh, how do you really structure your arguments? I mean, this is sort of all important skills that will come in useful in many contexts. And this is sort of a more protected space overall because it's not public where people can try this out. I suspect that also an important element of these meetings is that people realize that not everybody understands everything in all these papers that we read every week. You know, I mean, this is clearly rarely the case. And so they, they know they're not alone. So, um, I mean, I don't understand everything, every little detail in um, virtually all of the papers that we read. There's always some bit that I don't get. Sometimes it's not important, sometimes it is important, and it's also a skill to just deal with it, right? I mean, okay, so I didn't understand that detail of the scientific, of the uh, statistical analysis. Maybe I can just ask somebody. But maybe it's also not so important. So it's also a skill to compartmentalize the things that you may not completely understand and not let them derail you. I think this is a skill that you have to sort of uh, work on over time. And, you know, I can still remember, like, the biggest effect these journal clubs when I first attended one myself during a PhD student were, um, I remember the first <laughs> journal club that I attended, um, I was uh, completely flattened <laughs> by the fact that people would criticize a published paper that was completely new to me from my experience and, and my undergraduate. I thought that this was, you know, peer-reviewed and therefore it was, you know, quote-unquote perfect or it was sort of beyond criticism. And, you know, there's never a paper ever that we discuss that we don't criticize. We criticize every paper we read, um, sometimes more, sometimes less severely. Um, but this is always a major part of our discussion. So this, this you know, critical approach to literature, this is what you basically get in the in, uh, in the journal club, because if I did this by myself, there's, there's no way I would <laughs> pick up on all the potential weaknesses of a paper. It simply does not happen. And I think this is also what happens to other people in the lab this way. And uh, this is a, a super important skill, right? Because you cannot take what's published, even though it's published and maybe in a very prestigious journal or whatever, you, you cannot take that for granted. You need to critically analyze it, you need to dissect it, they need to, you know, look where the weaknesses are. So you can, in, in your in your mental landscape of this particular research area, you can put that in the right context. You know, like, is this really revolutionary? Has this really changed the way we think about something? Or is it crap? And this is super important um, to think about and super important to also practice. And I think the way, the, the moment that that happens, this is um, in, our, in our joint journal clubs. So, well... Um, I hope if you don't have a journal club, this was motivation for you to start one and you can always make the one that you have better. It takes effort by everybody to contribute, but it's extremely worthwhile. I think it really is literally the best thing we do here. See ya!